Welcome back to Two Chicks in a Horror Flick. I'm Tawny Ray. And I'm Felicia Connor. And today, our episode was Pet Cemetery, the original, but I came in at the last minute and changed it to be the original and the remake so that we could talk about them both. So sorry for the last minute change up, but Pet that's what cemetery, we're going to be. Pet Cemetery, head to head. Head to head. Unexpected head to head. Very unexpected. So the- I get a text from Tawny. (laughs) Hey. With this explanation of why we should watch them both. I feel like I need to watch them both. Would you be willing? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. (laughs) I almost texted you like three times and didn't. And then I finally was like, all right, fuck it. I just, yeah, let's go. So what are you drinking before we get started? I really feel like I need to switch it up or we're going to have to remove this segment. Because I am drinking a dirty martini. <laughs> so boring. With now I have one, two, three, four. I went even a little more. Cons- no, that's a lie. I think I just ate one right before we started recording. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I had five blue cheese stuffed olives, and um, the vodka I'm using is actually the the Kirkland Premium. You know the the premium vodka from Costco that you get in these giant things. Oh, okay. And I have cool. water too. That's I hear it's like good. the same as Grey Goose. They're like Kirkland? Made in, yeah, they're made in the same, hmm. d- you know, what, distillery or where you know whatever it's called, the place that they make wherever vodka. they make vodka. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are you drinking? Uh, same over here. I got some whiskey still that Buffalo Trace, and it's very good. I like it. Uh, but I do have something planned for next episode or episodes. Ooh. A different drink, so Ooh. prepare Shit. yourselves for that. I have to step it up. <laughs> I'm going to find something else, too. Maybe I'll graduate to a Cosmo or something. Ooh, okay. 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 We'll, we'll switch it up. We'll switch okay, it up. Okay, we'll switch it up. Um, and then the last thing I'll say before we get started is I just want to cheers to the fact that we have 500 downloads total oh, of guys. all time. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Seriously. So exciting. You have to Thank take you a so sip, much. Tawny. Oh, okay. I thought she wasn't going to take a sip. I'm like, bad luck. Um, yeah, because I'm going to tell you again, you're going to roll your eyes, but we love this podcast. Like, we just want to do this full time, all day, every day. Live, eat, and breathe horror. We already are. <laughs> we would like <laughs> right. to remove any other distraction. No, I'm just kidding. Well, not like a family's. <laughs> okay, never mind. This is going to be read all wrong. We just love this so much. And we yes. want to give you all we can give you. And we have so much fun stuff. So the more and more people that listen, it just like really amps us up and we love it. Yes. And we're having such a good time. We're like full, fully into Flicker Tree October yeah so balls to the wall flicker treat before we start can i show you then my shirt oh yeah 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 show me your shirt okay i hope i almost forgot hope you like it oh just a woman who loves horror movies (laughs) that's awesome perfect right that's awesome i almost got that one but i didn't Ooh, i have a couple more coming okay i wonder if we'll end up with some i wonder if we will i wonder i wonder Okay, we'll have to see. We'll have to compare. Yeah. I like how we're so, keeping this a mystery for yeah. each other. I will, when they come in the mail, I will look at it and I will feel it. And if it is a weird material or something, I just package it right back up and send it back. I've done that a couple mm-hmm. of times with a couple of shirts, but. I don't blame you. It's it's so much nicer to have it be comfortable. Yeah. Just no All turn right. back. Oh, geez. Here we go. Okay. Let's dive in. You ready? Oh, I'm nervous for this one. <laughs> Are you? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. So we're going to start off with the original, of course. So okay. Pet Cemetery was made in 1989. I had to have my notes side by side because I didn't know how you were going to do it. Ooh, okay. okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. I, I kind of figured we would go... We probably should have talked about this before we started recording, but I kind of figured we would go, like, original, and then we'll go, like, new, and then we'll, like, compare. Okay. Sounds good. That way, just maybe we can, like, kind of parse it out where it's, like, if somebody wants to skip because they haven't seen... I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to help with the spoilers, but I... You got probably screw, out the window. Screw the spoilers, girl. Screw them. But we will talk about the original first and then the second one and then... 
I figured naturally from there we'll go into a comparison of the two. Okay. Um, okay, so the, you know, the whole setup of Pet Cemetery is, if you didn't know, after tragedy strikes, a grieving father discovers an ancient burial ground behind his home with the power to raise the dead. Succinct. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great that's... summary. Um, so the director of the original is Mary Lambert, who actually, I was like, is this the first movie that we've talked about that a woman directed? And that it's true and it's not true because Goodnight Mommy had a female director. Oh, but there was it was two. co-directed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so wow. The, so this is the first movie that we've talked about that is directed by one woman. Holler Mary. So that's exciting and, yes. and cool. Of course, we're fans because we're women. <laughs> yes. Who love horror. So who great. Women who love horror. So that's awesome. Great job, Mary. It's a renowned film. So, um, and also, <laughs> I just, I also do this thing, Felicia. You talked about this in our last episode where you only write down the names that you recognize. <laughs> I do the same thing. <laughs> and I do it with movies that other people have directed. So sometimes, like, I won't do all of them. I'll just do a couple of them. So for Mary, I wrote down the other movies that she's done, which includes Pet Cemetery 2 and Halloween Town 2, Calabar's Revenge. Oh, she's a at. woman who loves horror movies. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, this is a perfect shirt to wear for this episode. It is. Yes, it is. It really is. And I I also don't recommend that you watch Halloween Town. If you didn't see it when you were a child, it is rough. I didn't. I did not see it. It's 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 a lot. But you know what? I love it because I watched it when I was a kid. So anyway. Yeah. Um the writers were Stephen King, it says the novel, and Stephen King for the screenplay. So mm. he did both. Nice. And it stars Dale Midkiff. Denise Crosby and Fred Gwynn. I hope I'm saying that right. Mm -hmm. And so th those are the people in this mostly. What about the little the girl kids. and the little boy? Oh, <laughs> because that Sorry. little boy, in, if you guys have seen it, and if you've also seen Kindergarten Cop. Oh, mm -mm. oh, darn. Well, the people who have, he's a little boy that goes like, boys have penises and girls have vaginas. <laughs> There's like the famous <laughs> scene because he's only in kindergarten. That's okay. Sin boy. Sin boy. Okay. Um, I have not seen that and did not recognize him. I think the, the girl had an interesting name, though. It was like Jete something. I didn't write it down, though. I'm sorry. So let's start with you, Felicia. Obviously, you had already seen this movie, mm -hmm. but you rewatched it. So tell me what your overall thoughts were. I was so bummed. I really did enjoy this movie. And when it came out, I was 12 and I watched it and I was, I do remember liking it. I, I, I didn't remember enough about it. Like that was my favorite movie, but I do remember being scared. Um, I remember what scared me the most was that sister. But what's funny is when I was rewatching it and then realized the sister was in that movie, <laughs> I was like, oh shit, oh. that sister, like. I didn't, yeah. I remember that character scaring me and I didn't remember it was in Pet Cemetery. Okay. And I have a lot to say about that because I don't think it fucking made sense to be in it. But, um, <laughs> I like thought that I would just be so nostalgic. I liked the book. Um, the unfortunate thing is I probably read the book when I was 12 too, around that age. Okay. And so I don't remember enough about the book. Yeah. But I remember I liked the book. I wanted to see the movie. Um, and yeah, I was, uh, I was, I was just disappointed in this movie. I, I didn't enjoy it and it bummed me out and I really tried really, really hard. And it wasn't because it was old because remember I watched Poltergeist and I still loved Poltergeist, you know? So yeah, yeah. that was my, I am. So relieved right now. I am breathing the biggest sigh of relief. Because I had a lot of problems with this movie. And I was like, I do not want to go back to Felicia and be like, I don't like this movie. Because I thought that you were going to like like it because you had a nostalgia factor. For like, I think that's why people like this movie a lot is because they watched it then or when they were younger and it scared the shit out of them which is totally understandable there are some very scary graphic moments in this movie 
but I was so, I was having such a hard time yeah. getting through it. I mean, it just was a slog kind of like. And to be fair, my husband also saw it when he was a kid around the same age. He's a year older than me. So he was, a you know, a little preteen or a newly teenager. And um, he was scared by it. And he rewatched it with me and was like, Ugh. I actually, for a moment, him talking about it, I almost said we should have him on this episode. Because I was hysterically laughing <laughs> with the shit he was <laughs> saying about the movie. Uh, but yeah. Um, you tell him anytime he wants to be on. Yeah. He's... I was like, oh my God, honey, you need to be on the podcast. You're so, just the, he was so riled up about it. He had so many issues with it. And so I'm sorry. Like, I guess we should get into it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I mean, it's not going to be like our last episode where we were like, and that's that. Like, I have a lot to say about I it. I have a lot to say yeah. about it, too. <laughs> I have opinions. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, shit. Where do you want to start? I'm going to start with something that was good. Okay. I thought them... Oh, shoot. Well, I mean, because I th the reason I said, oh, shoot, is because I thought about the... I didn't know if I could reference the new one too, but, or if we should wait on that. So I'll just say this, um, that little boy dying. Uh, I thought that was bold because uh, by the way, spoilers again, you've had oh, plenty shit. of time. Y'all y'all have, yeah. okay. 89. Yeah. It's been, <laughs> but we're going to, we're going to continue to spoil this. Turn back now. If you don't want it. Sorry. Keep going. Yeah. I'm sorry little, to interrupt you. Little boy dies. <laughs> um, the little boy to me is cute. <laughs> A oh my gosh, F. the cutest, Ugh. like the <laughs> cutest little boy. I literally put here, here's my notes verbatim, cutest little boy ever. Yes, 100,000%. <laughs> I love you, daddy. Oh my God, I love you too. Uh, like, I love that little snuggle that he dies and he comes back to life, guys. And when he comes back to life, I probably would hug him when he was I like, know. you know, like he's so cute. And the fact that they killed him. I thought was bold because he was cute and he was tiny and they killed him. Um, another positive thing. He was thing. so cute. Got let me cute. just continue. I, <laughs> Let's I know you said the cuteness. <laughs> you said that a lot, but let me just also say that I am not generally a kid person. Like I don't, I, you know, like I don't know. Unless it's a very very cute kid, I'm sort of not like into it but this little boy was so fucking cute Dude. i was like i couldn't even handle it and anyway, i couldn't even sorry. handle it too everything he said everything i wanted to kiss him um hug i just him. needed to second that for yes because like Dude, i just yeah cutest kid you will ever freaking see um i liked his sister um I know she was intense, but I liked, I liked that she was intense and I liked that she was naggy and in their face because I felt it justified why he would try to, um, why the old man would suggest burying the cat because of how much she loved that freaking cat and how worried she was about death. I also liked the old man. Um, that guy, he played uh, Edward Ed, Edward Munster, right? Is uh, from the Adams family. He's the dad. Tony. Okay. I don't know. But I'm sorry. Ed, um, he, I liked him. I liked him in the in the movie. As far as I thought, he did a. I thought they did a good job in that movie of really making him almost a beloved family member. He loved those kids. It was apparent. Um, so I thought they did a, a good job with that he is the movie he he, yeah. he is it like i for the first you know part of this movie i had a really hard time taking him seriously because the whole accent thing was like a lot and yeah. of course you know this guy has been like parodied to death right so like yeah. i had a really hard time in the beginning taking him seriously but by the end of the movie i was on board so like yeah. that says a lot i think i have a lot of issues with like you know going back and looking at things that have been like made fun of over and over again and, and yeah. taking it seriously. So the fact that by the end of this movie, I was like, I'm with this guy. I love him as a character. I think that says a lot just <laughs> because I could, I could finally do it with him. You know, he yeah. was great. He was really great and believable. Yeah. I like the idea of the story. I just don't think it went well. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> what did you like? So you loved that little boy, and you liked um, you liked the uh, old man too. So that yeah. was awesome. I really liked the. Um, I thought the parts of this movie that were scary looking fucking held up, man. Like I, when that when her sister turns around, oh, ooh, it mm. gave me chills. I. I loved that scene and it scared me a lot actually. I mean like it didn't like scare me like I was afraid, afraid to go to sleep, but it but it startled me. Like when do you know what I'm talking about, right? When she's like on the bed and then she yeah, like she's all... spins up. Ooh, I was Dude, like, oh, wow. She was scary. That's I remember her. She scared me so much as a kid. She was like the scariest part. Yeah. I, I and even watching it as an adult, she's the scariest mm-hmm. part. Like yeah. that. Ugh. Ugh. So good. So good. And then that moment where she walks in the room and she's like in the corner. <laughs> oh my God. I yeah. think I, I think I gasped at that moment. Uh, Jade and I were trying to remember. He was like, you, there was one time that you gasped in this movie. I think that was it. That I was like, <gasps> like, oh no. Yeah, she's it was all over there in the corner. Yeah. She was a scary character. That shot too, like that wide shot. I just don't think they did a lot of those, like probably back then. I could be talking on my ass here, but I feel like that's kind of more of a modern shot, you know. With the, it's mm-hmm. a wide shot of the room, and she's just like, a tiny part of it, but she's lit up from like underneath, and so you see her. That's like the first thing you see when you scan the room. You're like looking around the, yeah. you know, and you're like, what? You just magnetize to her, and she. It just was really good. That yeah. whole part was really good. I liked that a lot. Okay. And then the other like effects for the most part were like so good. Like Pascal was very scary looking. I totally get why people are afraid of this movie having seen it as a kid because it is visually very scary. It's also very dark, right? The the story itself is a very very dark story. Mm-hmm. And then you layer on top of that these practical effects that hold up you know, years the down the line. The cat was scary. Did they really inject and sedate that cat right in the... Dude, because that looked re- really real. Holy crap. Wow. Was, okay. I took a note on it, and then I think I deleted it. I'm sorry. I was so dying to hear about that cat, because it looked like uh, he killed it. Or it was... And then I was like, holy shit, that's so real. My husband's like, well, maybe they probably just sedated him. And I'm like, like right there, they just sedate the cat on the screen. Like, They did sedate it, from what I'm remembering... Okay, let me try to just I I deleted it and so I'm sorry. I'm going to I'm going to speak on my memory here. But I they he didn't actually inject it, but it was like some kind of thing rigged up to look like he injected okay. it. Okay. Um, Cuz it looked real in the little boy's neck too. When he did he, it. I know okay. obviously they didn't put a shot in the little boy's neck, but it looked pretty real. So Yeah. Yeah, I again there was like parts of this that looked really good. But, um, and then I think they did sedate it and they had like, uh, somebody on set to make sure and the cat made a full recovery and all that. Like I had, I had like seen that note and I copied and pasted it, but so the cat was cool. Everything was cool with that cat, but I thought that looked really good. The only part of this movie that I felt like didn't look good was baby zombie gauge. (laughs) So (laughs) glad you said that. Okay. Well, first the real human was, he's so cute. And Too did cute. not look like his face got smashed with a Mack truck. Okay. No. He was perfect. And he literally looked at the Mack truck and it hit him. He had like one blue vein. like right Oh, yeah. There. Like that yeah. was it? Okay. And then I know it's an older movie, but the doll made us all laugh. Like the baby gauge killer, when it was real gauge, like when he gave him a shot and he was crying, I was like, oh, no gauge. And then when he walked and he tripped and hit his head, I was like, oh, no, (laughs) the baby hit his head. I was too. Yeah. And then he acted like he was falling asleep. Okay, that was great. And then the rest of it (laughs) with the doll falling out of the attic. Coming out of the attic. (laughs) (laughs) And he's like struggling with it. (laughs) The doll. It was, that was. It was crazy. It was like. So bad. It was so bad bad so bad looking um so hold on i have a i have a yeah. note about that while we're talking about it i mean i tried to give it some some uh not space but i I tried to give it some yeah it, like some bones like feed the dog a bone because you know i know they can't fling the baby around the real baby but i just <laughs> it was just yeah silly i get that that's probably like what they had available to them at the yeah. time and so I can respect it for that. Like, 
but it did not hold up. Like, it looks so stupid, so silly now, right? Over the years, critics have frequently voiced concern over the impression that being in this film must have left on young Miko Hughes, that's his name, the kid actor. On the contrary, his parts during the horror sequences were shot separate from the more disturbing elements and violent action. He was later edited into these scenes while a child dummy, obviously, Mm -hmm. was used during the more intense action footage. So all I have to say about that is a big fat flipping you off on anybody who's saying that because um, about, oh, I'm concerned that it left a bad. Okay, we we should not that. Okay, wait, let me rewind. Not that you have to edit this out, but let me rewind. Okay, people should be concerned. Then you also should not make any movie whatsoever ever. Because there's also movies where I thought that the baby is very young and it's not a horror movie. It's just maybe like a drama or an action. Think about a movie where like they're think of like a war movie or, yeah, yeah. you know, a movie where they're running with the, the kid and there's stuff going off. Like, I don't think this <laughs> yeah. would have damaged, let's say, um, this little boy more than all the hundreds of children that were in Schindler's List. I don't know. I just think like, yeah, I don't even know what I'm saying. Honestly, I just think it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a, it's kind of a ridiculous thought process. I didn't yeah. read that in any other, but I don't know, but there were some extra sensitive people yeah. <laughs> in this movie about that. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Can um, I talk about this? Yeah, go ahead. We both feel that the sister was very scary. But why was she in this movie? Like, (laughs) I don't understand it. I don't understand that wife sniveling about her sister all the time. Like, what was the point? Like, um, what was the point? I, I just don't even know because it's about this... I get everything, the cat died, and you bury it here because the daughter, and then your baby dies. I totally get you want to bury, I don't agree with it, I'm just saying, you want to bury them so he comes alive. I get all of that. Why is this wife sniveling all the fucking time about this experience she had with her sister? What's the point? And I'm saying that when I really love the sister character, it's what scared me the most. But I just, I didn't get it. I didn't, I didn't get it, and I... I hated they was every time she was crying about it and crying about it. I'm just like, fucking get over it. Not that she has to get over it. Like it would be traumatic, but it was more like get over it because I didn't feel, I was like, oh, here's a sister again because it had nothing right. to do with the real the whole story, in my opinion. Anyway, that's how I feel about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tell us more about, tell us honestly how you feel. No, I agree. It, it was so disconnected and Jade agreed too. He was like, what the fuck with that sister? I have no idea what that even had anything to do with anything. Like he was so confused and so was I. However, I mean, spoiler alert, I had seen the remake before I saw the original and I, I don't know. I, I could see why she was there from that perspective. So without us getting into it, I still don't know fucking why. Well, yeah, I, I agree that it is still Whoa. very disconnected. But I feel like they tied it closer with what was going on in the remake than in the original. I don't get it. I don't get why she was hallucinating at all. So in my opinion, they did not make it clear that maybe using this ancient burial ground made everybody lo- lose their fucking minds and hallucinate. Yeah. Why? Like, I didn't, I didn't get, I'm sorry, I'm getting really, really riled up. No, that's no, no, good. That's good. I'll good. talk, I'll talk, I'll talk about why yeah. later when we, when we get into the remake, but, mm-hmm. um, let me throw in some random shit at you. Yeah, do it. Number one, what the fuck is shilly shallying? Does anybody know? <laughs> Write into us and tell me if you've ever heard of anybody use the phrase shilly shallying. Have you ever heard anybody I've, I've say never, that? I've never. I've never heard anyone say shilly Never in shallying. my life. I had to write it down because I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I've ne- I don't even... You made that up. You made it up. Obviously, Stephen King is not a good fucking screenwriter okay like that's the fucking i'm sorry well is is this like did he screenwrite for some other movies that we love i mean okay here i'm a big stephen king fan like we you know slow your roll (laughs) you're getting into dangerous territory i don't even know i don't know how many screen 
I don't even know, besides Creepshow <laughs> and this one. Um, he's uh, I like his books, obviously, so I don't have any say on that. You know what? I don't know. Very no interestingly, idea. having watched Creepshow right before this, is that I felt like Creepshow wasn't as crazy, dialogue-wise, as this movie. This movie was crazy dialogue like some of the things that came out of their mouths i have to admit yeah like if you're mm, i read this uh, i read his book called dolores claiborne Uh it's like a huge long monologue and there's a lot of uh that type of language like i don't know like if people of a certain era era really used language that heavily like i notice in stephen king's books they're very um very thick with accents if they have accents or very yeah. thick with that those type of slang terms I, I don't know what would be what's the word col- colloquial i don't even know but his, his books are very much if you are a character that has that type of a thing it is extreme it is pr- extreme and prominent yeah 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 and i think uh, yeah i get that and i think that it can work in like a book when you're reading a book because you're mm-hmm. like I don't know. It just but because it, it helps you picture it. Yeah, but it just did not come. I mean, like one of the things that I mean, obviously, shilly shallying fucking killed me. I was like, I can't with this. And then, but there was like all this dialogue that was just like very weird. One of the uh, only other examples I can think of is when Judd is like, he's like telling him he's like uh, the 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 fucking I don't even remember but it was like the man's heart is stonier than the ground that was just at the thing and something about how a woman has never looked into a man's heart from that perspective and talked about secrets (laughs) and I was just like what we literally paused the movie at that point we had to rewind and watch it a few times and because the guy says it the ghost says it he says it right in some oh no uh, mine is, is when Judd. Judd is no. talking to him. Oh, no, no, no. I know, but it was said it before. I think it oh, was yeah. said by the ghost. And then when Judd said it again, we're like, we paused it. And then we're like, okay. And the girls go, what? What? And I'm like, well, I know the ghost said it. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's important. And then my husband's like, I think what they're trying to say is yeah I mean, he doesn't talk like that i love my husband but i think what they're trying to say is a man's heart stony and they're not as emotional as women blah 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 da, 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 da. and i'm just like oh, I didn't jade know. jade had to explain it to me too like <laughs> i don't know what it was about men that picked up on whatever the yeah. fuck they were trying to put down in this moment but i was not i was like what the fuck is he saying i was like spit it out judd what are you saying like this is really dire circumstances happening right now <laughs> like this is like some crazy shit stop the poetry I fucking hate that I like, know, stop. just say it. <laughs> just say and it. it. And it was like a long run on three sentence, run on sentence. It was just like, what the? <laughs> what? This is kind of a side note, but this is one of my pet peeves in movies when, and I know it's a part of the movie, but when there is uh, a character that goes on this long thing, it makes me roll my eyes. So for example, and this is just a recent example, and I absolutely loved the movie. My kids and I watched um, The Shape of Water. Uh-huh. And I love it. The, I'm just bringing this up because it's, this is the first thing that comes to my mind. And I'm not going to ruin anything, but there's one character who's talking to another character. And he needs to find something. Like, I really don't want to ruin this movie for yeah, everyone. Because that's not what you showed up for. He needs to find something. And he's like, he has her and he's asking questions. And then he goes... You know, candy, blah, 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 candy, blah, blah, blah. Shut the fuck up. I hate when people do that. And a lot of times bad guys do that. They go, you know what, the rainy day. And I know they're just trying to like (laughs) make you sit there and sweat because you don't know what they're going to do. And I hate that. So anyways, (laughs) yes, I roll my eyes with that. I'm like, come on, dude, just get to the point. Yeah. Just say whatever. You're Unless you're say. really gonna like say something that at the end you're really gonna like go, oh shit. Then take your time. But a right. lot of times that's not what happens. They're just like blah 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 and then whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um the yeah. I I felt like we'd have to look up what other things Stephen King writes to see mm, yeah. if it's across the board. To really the board. verify across the board if he's a terrible screenwriter. 
Yeah, but this, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But this made me feel like, no, he is not it. And I have another. I know he worked really closely um, on The Outsider, which is the new series, and, and that's good. Okay. I, I've, I've heard really good things about that. I read the book, too, and I listened to the book. Okay, so I have two tidbits that are, are kind of linked to this that I think I feel maybe... like I should tattoo Stephen King on my neck. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Stephen <Yeah>. King. <laughs> okay, and for anybody who can't see me and has not seen my social media, I do have tattoos, but none on my neck, none on my face, none on my chest. <laughs> Nothing about Stephen King, right? <laughs> Nothing about Stephen King. Not no. yet. Not yet, anyways. No, no, no. Um, okay, so this was the first filmed screenplay that Stephen King adapted from one of his own novels. So it's possible that he did okay. some later that were better. Maybe this was just the first stab and it did not work out well. Um, and Stephen King required the movie to be filmed in Maine and his screenplay to be followed rigorously, which also makes sense. Like, there's like a lot of stuff that's happening that could have been changed or nixed or whatever i think specifically again like we're talking about with the dialogue anyway no that's good that you did it so i um when we watched this i talked to my husband i'm sorry did i interrupt you no no okay cool oh i was talking to my husband and he's like well maybe it's just because it's old and blah 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 and so i looked up uh stephen king's film films and carrie you know that was in 1976 did he write that uh, Carrie, yeah, he wrote that book and the But movie. did he write the screen? Okay. Oh, that's the only problem is I don't know. On this list I have, it doesn't say who wrote the screenplay. Yeah. But I just meant movie-wise. I was like, no, honey, there's good old movies that still yeah. stand the test of time. And I, and I brought up Carrie, The Shining yep. came before that. I got I got a couple, too, that we'll get into later. Later. Now, Cujo, Christine, Children of the Corn, Firestarter. Oh, dude, I loved Firestarter. So these are all Stephen King ones. And the only problem is, though, these are I, none of these, besides Carrie, uh, have I rewatched recently. Okay, so yeah. So my husband did say, but have you watched any of those recently? And I'm like, oh, shoot, no. But one that I have watched over and over and over again is Stand By Me. And that was in 86 and Pet Cemetery was in 89 and Stand By Me is phenomenal. So I don't know. I was okay. So I'm, I was going to talk about this later, but I, while we're on the subject, I also, oh. because I fucking really disliked this movie and there was, I had so many problems with it and I started to be like, what is wrong with me? Am I just a hater? Are all movies like this from that time period? So I went and looked up just to like, see, am I crazy or are there other movies from 89 and prior that I felt like were good and that were not mm -hmm. terribly acted. Ooh, so I'm what glad I you did this. What I found, I only found a few, and they're mostly not horror related because <laughs> I didn't want to ruin it if we don't talk about them in, the, in like later on. But the first two that I wrote down was When Harry Met Sally. Ooh. I watched that movie very recently, like mm -hmm. six to eight months ago recently, and I really, really liked it. Like, I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did, but I really liked it. And that was an 89 movie. And, like, is there a little bit of overacting? Like, maybe. But it it was good. I liked it. It held mm -hmm. up. Also, Do the Right Thing. I also watched that, like, maybe sure eight I've months ago. It, I don't remember it. Um, it was good. I liked it a lot. Again, I think there was maybe a little bit of overacting, but I, I, could, I could excuse it for those movies. And... My top example, which I am going to ruin this one, so oops, sorry. <laughs> but I actually was like, I was so concerned about my own opinion that I went and watched parts of this movie just to see, is the acting crazy like this movie? It's The Thing from 1982, Ooh, which I I've never seen. love. Sorry, okay. ruined it. But, well, you know, but I've never seen it, so they don't know how I feel about it. Oh, I'm so shocked you haven't seen this movie, actually. Mm -mm. This is going to be a treat. I think you're going to love it. Um, but I went and watched like parts of that movie to be like, what was the acting like? Did they say crazy things? Was the dialogue bad? Fucking no. That is a great movie. And again, I didn't watch, I didn't rewatch the whole thing, but like I, just scenes of people talking to each other were phenomenal. So like, it's not the time period. There were other mm -hmm. things going on. Well, have you seen Stand By Me? No. Oh God. Tawny. You okay. gotta see Sam. I think you'd really like it. What a fucking great movie. 
And that was 86. Like, okay. R- good acting. It's all kids. Like, just hopefully there's people out there that agree with me. I know there are. I know people love this movie. It was just a really, really good movie. And that was 86. Yeah. Like, I, I really can't say anything bad about it. So I'm glad you brought brought up those. I, w- I looked it up real quick because last night or the night before last, we just watched Sleepless in Seattle. And I cried. And I absolutely loved it. It was 93. Not like okay. things were so more advanced in 93, but... <laughs> no, but dude, I do... I'm starting to formulate a theory that, like, before, like, 89, 90, I have a, I have a real hard time liking those movies. 90 and beyond, I can get on board with. And it, I think it, I think a lot of it has yeah. to do with my attention span. One of the things that I didn't look up because again I only had like a 48 hour rental and I missed the boat on the original Pet Cemetery, but I think when I was doing research and writing down my notes, you don't see her sister until 75% of the way through the, the movie. And again, we'll talk a little about this a little bit later, but you see the sister 15 minutes into the remake. So it's obvious that audiences and it's people It's obvious she has a problem with her sister, but fucking why does it matter? Okay, so hold on that. Okay, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Tawny. I'm sorry. No, no, no you're fine. <laughs> what I'm saying is that it's obvious that audiences and people now have such a short attention span that it's very, oh. like, we, like, the pacing is so different nowadays. We ought, we we definitely need to be fed stuff a little bit sooner. And I think that's part of my problem when I go back and I watch older movies. You're and that's right. part of the problem I, I, that I had with Creep Show. Like, I just, I, 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 like, I need you to, get on with it, you know? And yeah, I'm sorry. That's, you know, no, I, no, that, that makes total sense. It's just millennial. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> that was totally joking. I need everybody to know I was joking. <laughs> no, totally though. Like really, it's like, I actually, it's not my fault. It's like the, the time that I was raised, you know, like I, I have been spoon fed information so fast that I'm expecting it to be, I need shit to be on pace. I tried to watch the birds by the way, at some point when I was, you know, an adult like several years ago (laughs) and I could not fucking handle it it was like there was a five minute scene of a girl crossing a lake in a boat and I just was like kill me I cannot watch this for five minutes like (laughs) it's obvious oh go ahead it's different I'm sorry I'm just no no you're sorry I interrupted you I'm just saying that the, the pacing is like a big thing for me and I recognize that's why I had a hard time with this movie and older movies as well um, I appreciate that. I, I think I'm right in the middle and it's probably cause I'm older. No, I'm just kidding. I'm like, um, Boomer. we'll talk. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. I love it. Um, we'll talk about it, but I thought stuff happened too fast and we'll talk about it. Um, I didn't mind the pace of this movie, but maybe what you're saying, how that sister is introduced so late that it even kind of uh, amplified the fact of why is this even being brought up yeah I never even thought of that but I also don't like when things take too long like you know get to the point what are we doing but it has to be like I see I totally see what you're saying yeah and I think go ahead I was just gonna say that I um you know I think part of it too is knowing what the plot is gonna be for me and having seen the remake and also like even without watching the remake you know what the plot of this movie is right going in yeah the and so I think that does not help the pacing right like as I know what's going to happen I want you to just show me that thing and so when you when I'm sitting there for 45 minutes watching these people have a picnic flying kites (laughs) and shit I'm just like I think you and I I'm gonna guess but I'm not ready to move into the next episode. I mean, I'm sorry, the next uh, movie. But I think you and I had a similar experience, but flip-flopped, maybe. Okay. And I think it's because we watched it back to back. Okay. Maybe. I think I think that's part of it, for sure. And because I was saying that to my husband today. I'm like, maybe I shouldn't have watched it back to back. Because what you're saying, without me saying anything, because we haven't gone into it yet, um, I had that same experience. But... With reversed like, yeah okay but reversed okay so let me ask you this which i thought um uh it, it, i just i i feel this would have been better i feel if the um old man and i don't remember his name fred I, Gwynn. fred Gwynn or judd judd i feel if judd would have said 
There is a cemetery that if you bury something dead there, it will come alive. The guy, the main character, the doctor, would have went there, okay? I hated, hated the bullshit of this, he has no idea, because it's bullshit. So first of all, they go all the way to the pet cemetery, they're going to bury a cat, okay? And then the guy's like, no, let's go over this very precarious bunch of branches and shit that could break your neck to go a little further to bury it. I don't believe, I don't believe that anybody would be like, okay, with no explanation as to why are we going to a different place? Not only that, dude, but then for the next like 10 minutes, we're on an epic fucking adventure. 40 fucking, we're talking Lord of the Rings epic adventure to this place. And the guy is not saying anything. Th- through different types of lands like we're going Shit. over fucking... we're on the coast <laughs> we're the... yeah they're <laughs> crawling over cement blocks that have measurements on them for whatever fucking reason I, it was just like absurd what? yeah i agree and all he said was where are we going judd you know come on i feel i really feel this was a huge miss in both well in the story is not really the movie in the story in general yeah. that if he would have known if Joe would have said there's a place knowing how much the kid loves the cat that the cat would be alive there would be enough curiosity yes. to actually go not no don't bury it there let's go here okay let's go here come the fuck on that's just that was stupid and irritating. Really stupid and irritating. You know what else I thought was very funny? And, like, this is such a minor detail, but I was just like, <laughs> okay. They travel through an epic adventure <laughs> to get to this burial ground, okay? And it's still daytime. And then they, like, cut. And it's fucking nighttime. And I'm like, how long did it take you to bury to dig up that three-foot fucking hole for that cat? Like, that's what took you all day? That makes no goddamn sense. How long yes. did it take you? <laughs> I was just Okay. I did like the burial ground. Um, it looked it good. It was neat, that big round circle with all the stuff. I thought it was more impactful. I thought it was very impact. I, I liked it. Uh, wh- who was that face? They're climbing, and there's this they're off, apparently on the coast now. It's ocean and cliffs. <laughs> and his face goes blah and then goes away. Was that Pascal? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I was literally like, who is that? I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. That okay. part was weird and dumb. That was just stupid. God. I don't think anybody would have gone. I think a human, the majority of human beings might have gone if he said that things will come alive. Yeah. And because you wouldn't believe it, but you'd be curious. And I think that would have been more believable. Totally. Agreed. Okay. Um, let me take this opportunity to say I, I thought it was very funny and I didn't realize before we got into this movie that Judd was going to say his famous line three goddamn times within the span of like 90 seconds. <laughs> I was like, no wonder people glommed on to dead is better. Because he said it literally three times in that monologue. <laughs> I was dead like... Dead is better. <laughs> sometimes. Dead is dead better. Is better. But he did it three... I was like, okay. I so, was waiting for it. Also, when the guy was like, uh, the father, went through all that, the cat comes back, the cat is evil. And then he goes to Judd, and Judd's like, yeah, actually, I know a lot about that. Because apparently... They buried, this dad buried his son way back when, and Judd and his friends went to kill the son because he was an abomination. And then they were literally, they went to the door and were like, hey, dude, the the, the son's father, right? Which was their friend. Um, hey, get out of there because we're going to burn the house down. But he didn't. So they just killed everybody in there. Like it was, they <laughs> yeah. committed massive murder. Like they, they murdered their friend. They burned him alive. That's I understand burning the sun, it like was a zombie, but they were literally like, get out of there. Oh shit. Sorry. Too late. And like killed their friend and the, and whatever. And he tells them this whole story. Like why on earth wouldn't you say that beforehand? Like, right. There was just like so many unbelievable 
ridiculous moments. And then the guy's reaction to that. He didn't oh say, like, God. why didn't you tell me this beforehand? He's just sitting there. <gasps> wow. Like, I don't know. It just that's, that's a really great segue to my biggest problem with this movie. Are you ready for me to have a rant about this? I'm ready. My least favorite problem and what I think kills this movie more than anything else is that fucking actor guy. I have never in my life seen a motherfucker move his eyebrows less. It was like watching cardboard act. I could not believe how fucking bad of an actor this guy was. I was, sh I can't even fucking handle it, dude. I was like, let me just talk about all the weird fucking moments. One, well, first of all, just anything that's happening, he has literally no reaction to. Like what you're talking about. He's sitting there talking to Judd and he's just like, no, nothing. No. And here's one of my pet peeves. I got to have a lot of eyebrows. Okay. I do a lot of eyebrows and I need you to give me eyebrows for me to believe whatever you're trying to give me. And so when people don't move their eyebrows, I just cannot. I'm like, you have no soul. Like you're a piece of cardboard. I don't know. I can't read what's happening. You, you have to give it to me. And he literally did not move them like at any moment. But then he had the, so he was like way underacted. Like, he did nothing. And then in moments, though, he was way overacting. Like when he was like yeah. dealing with Pascal and there was like a blood spurt on him, he was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> You're a fucking doctor. How many times have you been sprayed with blood? It doesn't make sense for you to act that way. And then when he's, oh, this is one of the worst ones, when he's digging up the fucking like his daughter and the cop like almost sees him but like leaves and then he laughs maniacally <laughs> as he's digging her up i was like that was way overacted and then there was like just a few moments throughout the entire movie where he was like weirdly sinister but he's supposed to be this like lovable dad that you're supposed to like you know yeah, attach he's to like, lose not losing his mind like he's sinister he's in grief stricken right but like it did that... not come across that mm -hmm. way it was awful he was the worst part of this entire movie yeah do you agree were you like what did you pick up on this or what am no, i crazy yeah. no i totally agree i have notes that he like his emotion yes no okay he was he was terrible <laughs> i really um I really hated the wife, but yeah, she I, was bad too. <laughs> I um, uh, but she w definitely wasn't like underacted like him. I totally agree with you. Like he just didn't have enough emotions. Sometimes he did. I totally agree with you. Like he's this actor maybe has never s experienced grief before. I don't know because he did. He's not evil because he's digging up his child. He's right. grief stricken. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. The wife was sniveling because I obviously really hated the fact that she cried about her sister all the time because I didn't think it fit and um hated her as well for hit her parents were like the biggest pieces of shit and the yeah. fact that she went to their house like 150 million times during this movie, like she was never home. <laughs> yeah. She's always at their fucking house, which made me hate her even more. Like, daddy, mommy, I always need to be with you. Like it irritated me. Like she was like this pampered, snotty little, br I just couldn't even stand her. And then, oh my God, that scene um, at the funeral, her father, like I'm going to tell you right now. And I told my husband just so he could be assured of my love for him. <laughs> if we were at a funeral and my dad did that at the funeral, I wouldn't go, oh, daddy, oh, mommy, hold me. I'd I know. say, you two get the fuck out. I'd be like, mom, get him out of here. I never want to see you the ever, ever, ever the fuck again. First of all, I would not be spending Thanksgiving with my parents and leaving my husband alone just because they hated him. Yeah. Uh, sorry, mom and dad, if you're listening to this episode, but I wouldn't be spending Thanksgiving with you. Uh, my husband, I love him. He's a good man. I'm eating with him. Like, she just was such a fucking despicable character, period, because of those things that yeah. made her who she was. <sighs> okay. Agreed. And, like, <laughs> one of the scenes that I had a huge problem with, too, is when she's like, oh, promise our kid. 
promise her that the cat is not going to die. What I'm like, a bitch. That's, a, that's a fucking unreasonable ask. Like, you cannot really? say that. And I was and so then, happy he said that. Me too. We, uh, Jade and I too. That's the most believable part of this entire movie, by the way. Th- that tiny scene where she was like, oh, you better promise. And she, he was like, uh, trapped, promised. And then he went to her and he was like, I'm fucking mad that you made me promise that. We were like, hell yeah. That was the only moment that yes. this guy was a good actor. <laughs> A hundred percent. That was his shining moment. (laughs) I agree with you. And I get the fact that she had this issue with death. It worried her and um, maybe it stemmed from her sister. But again, who gives a shit if she has an issue with death? I don't think her issue with death mattered at all in this movie. Okay. Like, I don't think, I don't think it played. Okay. Okay, cool. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you with that. No, I'm glad. If you're agreeing with me and you interrupt me, that's great. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Not yeah, if you don't, I, I just felt like, yeah, I didn't think that that was a bit. Can I say one thing? I don't know if you noticed it, but this really irritated me. And I, as I'm writing my notes, I made a connection, I think. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to mention two things. First, this weird picture of this short, <laughs> round woman with a top hat that was in her parents' home. They kept showing it, like this picture of this weird woman. Okay. Second, the little boy is in the room. Why the fuck is he in a top hat with a cane? So when I watched the movie, I didn't put those two together at all, okay? Yeah. I wrote a note about this weird woman with the top cat and a, and a cat, a top hat, a cat, and a cane, this weird woman. It's obviously not a family member. Maybe it is. And then I made a note about the little boy. Why on earth is he dressed in this weird little dress with a top hat and a cane? I hated that. Like, because it was so stupid. Like, why? Why did they, why is he dressed that way? I don't care. Kids dress in top hats with canes, but it was, (laughs) there's no point to it. So as I'm writing my notes, I thought, oh shit, is he supposed to be her? Which made me hate it even more because who is that? Okay. What is this? In my research, I think, I think that is supposed to be her sister. I think that's supposed to be a painted portrait of her as a child. Okay. Well, just because she had spina bifida, right? Or I don't know what it is. Why did she dress that way? Like, why did they dress her like a weird little, a weird little circus and a uh, circus character because she know. had that disease? I don't know, but let me let me find okay, this note. Stupid. I, it okay. was dumb. It was dumb <laughs> because that did not come across. That did not come across at all that that was her sister. No, no right? I agree. It was. Did she it ever was go? Oh, my sister ever? No, it was just like a no. picture on the wall. Okay. I wouldn't have known except for the fact that I just came across it in the research, oh. right? Uh, and but, just because she has this spinal deformity, they why did they dress her like a? Well, I think person? I think that the painting was done before maybe the symptoms of this thing, or I maybe. Know, but it, when did those kids grow up? That woman was. I know it was weird. Let me write down. Okay. This was this is with Jade's contribution to this. They episode. would have been kids in the sixties. Why was she dressed like that? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> he said this painting is the real horror of this movie. <laughs> Because okay. it was, like, creepy. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. You too. Every time. Every episode, I love you even more, and I love him and you even more. <laughs> Every single time we talk. That is so awesome. It made me laugh really hard when he said it. I was like, you're right. But yeah, like, and so then I think the, the situation where... He, Gage, the boy, is dressed up as her. It's supposed to be some sort of callback to her, but I agree. It's totally lost in translation. You don't know watching the movie that that's her sister. It's, it's, how are you supposed to know? Mm hmm. So when this little boy, who is this killer boy from the dead, is dressed like that, it, it pissed me off because it seems so um, random. So random. There was no point to it. Why did you do that? Why didn't you just dress him like a little, a little, kid like yeah but now if that was the point they were trying to make they missed that completely Uh, totally yeah okay um so i have a few just like trivia things that i'll go through unless you want to No, i think i was looking at my notes here and um that was i i said everything that i needed to say (laughs) okay good (laughs) i for one feel very cleansed from this conversation (laughs) me too Okay, good. (laughs) Okay, so here are my trivia 
things. Bruce Campbell was the first choice for the role of Lewis Creed, which I think could have also been a disaster, <laughs> maybe. I don't know who Bruce Campbell is. Bruce Campbell was in Evil Dead and Evil mm. Dead 2 and I think all the rest of the Evil Deads. Uh, so he's very, he's like comedic to me now. So maybe mm-hmm. he, maybe he would have played a, a series character in this movie and that could have been okay, but I don't know. I just think of Bruce Campbell now as like a funny, he's a funny guy to me, but um, at least it would have been better than watching literally nothing. <laughs> literally nothing. Jesus. Okay. The role of Zelda, Rachel's terminally ill sister, was oh, yeah. played by a man. Director, I knew you'd like this one. I knew you'd like this one. Director Mary Lambert wanted Zelda and her scenes to frighten the audience, but did not believe that a 13-year-old girl was scary, so she cast Andrew Hubetsek, sorry for the butcher of that, in the role to make something be off about Zelda, which is totally, it totally comes through. Like, there is definitely, like, an Uncanny Valley situation happening with the sister, where you're just, like, there's something unsettling, but you can't really put your finger on what it is yeah beautiful choice by her yeah i i honestly think that character is so um scary and impactful that that storyline could have been a different story totally agreed um okay let's see i already told you that one director mary lambert said that fred gwynn was her first and only choice for the role of judd crandall which makes sense yeah he's so good i love that old guy i wish he was my neighbor I know, he's really great. And then here's another little tidbit about him. Fred Gwynn said he put his character on like a pair of overalls, which I think also comes through. He is so yeah. good. I just really love, loved him a lot. I did too. He, he was, like I said, he was the movie for me. Yeah. And that little boy. Oh yes. My God, he was so cute. Boy. I would have let him kill me. I'm telling me you. too. I'm telling you, if I was that boy's mama and he said, mommy, and he had a butcher knife, I'd be like, come here, baby. <laughs> come here <laughs> come here baby come to mama give me a hug <laughs> <laughs> um okay so this was a long this is a long one bear with me if i can have our time getting through it we're gonna go in a whole circle here so just hang on through this segment with me pet cemetery was director mary lambert's second feature film she was better known for her work directing music videos especially those for madonna including madonna material girl 1985, and Madonna, Like a Prayer, 1989. Hey! <laughs> Though her work in the music, through her work in the music industry, Lambert was friends with the Ramones, who were one of Stephen King's favorite bands. She approached them about recording a song for the film, and they agreed to write and perform Pet Cemetery, which is featured during the closing end credits. That is a cool, that's a cool tidbit. I love that. I had to leave that one in because I thought it was so Yeah, that's neat. fun. That's fun. Yeah. I felt like I knew Stephen King a little bit better just knowing that his favorite yeah. band is the Ramones. I or really was. like him. I, I know. I think I've said it. Oh, God. I was literally going to say I think I've said it before, and I think I have in this episode. No, no. I think maybe it was in Creep Show. His book, Stephen King on Writing, if you want to be a writer, you have to read it. It's so inspiring. And if you don't want to be a writer, you should read it because it is so brilliant the way you just learn him, his whole story about how he became the writer he he is. is. Yeah, Yeah. it's just great. Sorry. Sorry, Tommy. No, no worries. Um, Ellie is a psychic in the novel, but Mary Lambert's not convinced she was able to convey that in the film. And I think she's right to not be sure about that because... Although Who's a I, psychic? Who's a psychic? Ellie. The girl. The little girl? Although I will say, like, the second time that she was like, oh, I had a dream about daddy dying or whatever the second thing is, I was like, bitch, you better listen to that little kid. She, she's, she's having visions, okay? Oh, she's supposed to be a psychic. Yeah. Ellie, well, Ellie is psychic in the novel. And so I think she tried oh. to pull that into the movie, but she's not even sure if, if it came through. Yeah, I thought... Um, I didn't realize she was psychic, even though I, I can see, I thought that she, it through the movie anyways, um, you know how little kids are more open? Yes. Yeah. That's, that's how I saw it. But I, I liked Ellie, by the way. Oh, I mentioned that already. <laughs> I think you might've briefly mentioned it. I liked her I too. did. I liked her. She was intense, but I, I liked that. And, uh, we'll find out why. In, okay. When we talk about the next movie, why I like this little girl so much. <laughs> uh, 
Um, here are my last few things. Let's see. Tom Savini turned down the chance to direct the film. So we, this is a weird one. This was an interesting one to be like sort of tied in the same week with Creepshow because of all of the interesting tie-ins. Yeah. Right? Like Tom Savini was going to direct this. Also, George Romero was supposed to direct this film, but ran into scheduling conflicts due to monkey shines, which you mentioned in our Creepshow episode. Holy crap. That's awesome. Isn't that weird? Okay. That is weird. It was just all the shit was happening all at once, I guess. Good job, fans, because this was a fan pick. I don't know if we mentioned that. Pet think, Cemetery was the second fan pick. I think we might have mentioned it in the beginning. We well, don't we remember anymore. We mentioned it now. We mentioned yep. it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, last one for this movie is throughout the film, it's shown that the Creed family suffer from nightmarish, nightmarish visions and premonitions, implying that they all have the shining ability. Uh, oh. And in parentheses, The Shining is a metaphysical mechanic that Stephen King has utilized in many of his books written subsequently to that one as part of a shared literary universe. Well, I guess that explains why everyone was losing their minds, I guess. Yeah. I'm not happy with it, though. <laughs> I'm not happy about it. So that brings us to Pet Cemetery: the remake, 2019. The directors of this one... I'm not going to do another synopsis. This is the same fucking story, y'all. Yeah, okay. it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> directors were Kevin Kolsch and Dennis Widmer. Widmeyer? I hope I didn't mess those up. Stars were Jason Clark, Amy Simitz, or Simitz, and John Lithgow, uh, who is the only person I recognized. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so... Did you go first last time? I did go first last time. Should I go first this time or should you go first again? Should we carry no. on the tradition? No, you go, you go. Okay. Because I, I really lo- don't know what you're going to say. Oh, okay. Oh, should I do now? <laughs> she knows. <laughs> I, I let the cat out of the bag. I fucking loved this movie. I loved it. I thought it was like a thousand million times better than the remake. Or I mean, I'm sorry, the original. And so that's why I felt like I couldn't talk about this movie by itself i had to talk about it in comparison with the remake because i just feel like the remake took the idea and really ran with it like i just loved it i thought it was dark and anxiety inducing the pacing was way better for me obviously the acting was like a thousand million times better and i thought they made a thousand choices better than in the original that's my hot take what's yours so i feel like this is going to be a really good episode in my opinion because i fucking loathed it <laughs> i loathed this movie i hate it hated, wow. hated it this okay. movie will get my lowest score ever oh my god okay okay <laughs> i'm shocked i'm shocked by that but is it because i saw them back to back i don't know so i'm really curious about the uh, our conversation i still love you I was really <laughs> cold with that, actually, because in in the um in the first one, you were so kind, like, oh, I'm so glad you didn't like it because I didn't want to hurt your feelings. And then you were like, oh, I love this movie. I'm like, I fucking hated it. Like, that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, Tawny. But <laughs> no, you're fine. Let's talk about it. Let's let's uh, let's talk about it, though. Yeah. OK. OK. So tell me why you hated it. OK. Um, I just really hated it. <laughs> I <laughs> I really hated it. I um I did uh think the dad was more emotional better. I did recognize that for sure. Um I was concerned that I didn't like it just because it was up against the other one and maybe I oh, I was over the storyline. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I was saying seeing it back to back that totally. I feel like so I feel like they took the same story and just switched some stuff up and the switches weren't better, in my mm. opinion. Enough. Okay. Better enough. So I was watching yet another mediocre make of this particular book is how I felt. Uh, um, okay. I did not, same thing, believe why that guy followed that old guy into the unknown. Um, I love John Lithgow in general. I love him. He's such a great ev- evil character, too, and all the shit he does. Totally. Um, but I, I really loved the other guy more, Edward 
Gwen. I felt like his, I didn't, I, I was surprised that at the birthday party, John Lithgow, his character said to the little girl, you've already stolen my heart. I don't remember what her, her comment was, but he was like, you've already done that, like stolen his heart or whatever. Like he loved her. I was like, oh shit, you do. I didn't realize that. Okay. I didn't realize he cared that much. He was always kind of standoffish and a little more intense. Uh, where I felt the a character in the first movie, you bought that he loved those kids and that family. He just kind of like they adopted him. Um, didn't care about the kid, the girl. Uh, and I mean, she was, I mean, uh, that's why I loved the first girl so much. I felt like I bought that she loved that cat so much that they would go to those great lengths to bury the cat. Where in this one, I didn't even know she really liked the cat that much. And, uh, and okay. I didn't know the guy liked the kid that much to not want her to be sad to take the dad on this adventure to bury the cat at this this grave site um, until later. And um, the sister still didn't resonate with me. Yeah, it was it was introduced sooner. I thought the reason that woman felt the death was her fault was less of a reason in the second than the first, but maybe I missed something because I know in the first one she was choking and she tried to help her and then she left. So I get why she felt that she had killed her. Then the other one, her sister fell down the thing. Like it's her fault. Like she fell. And, but I did think the falling down the thing that was, that was, you know, kind of a jump moment. Hated the mom yet again, hated like sniveling around and whatever. Um, (laughs) I didn't like when she saw her sister fall in the cabinet. I mean, I liked that. I thought that that was creepy. And then she went out and she's standing there weird. First of all, I was looking at her like, what is she doing? And then he's like, what's wrong? Nothing, nothing. How about I'm fucking hallucinating? I'm hallucinating and I'm losing my shit. She's like, nothing, honey. I don't think we should have moved here. But remember when we moved here? It was stupid. Um, (laughs) I I don't know. Like, I really, I didn't like either... um, that uh what do i have here i hated hated the mom's initial reaction to her daughter's death i do have to say afterwards i I believed it you know her crying but how she was (sighs) thrown she is on the pavement in the street looking goodness my child is dead i fucking hated that you would be fucking losing your mind you would be i guess everyone experiences grief different but i don't think you would be dramatically leaning against the pavement and your daughter's dead yeah. on the side of the road okay so i should let, let me, you talk i'm sorry i'm sorry no, tony no, no. i lost you're fine. it okay you're fine okay good. i don't mind at all but uh, on that note i do like i liked her um reaction because for me i think one of my biggest fears in life is that i'm going to see somebody get like mortally wounded and I'm terrified of of actually seeing something like somebody is injured to the point of like almost death or, you know, something that is just I actually don't know how I'd react. And I think I would not be able to look or handle the situation like I'd like to think that I would be able to. But I don't think I would. In In all reality, I think I would not be able to look and I would just be avoiding. So in that way, I liked her reaction that she couldn't even look. But she wasn't even crying. Her daughter was just hit by a Mack truck. You're like, she wasn't even crying. She was just kind of sitting I guess there I, breathing. Yeah. I guess I took that as shock. I so I didn't yeah. hate that as much. But I mean, I no, but I, that's cool because I don't. I can only relate it to how I would react yeah. right so totally totally i yeah. i didn't like it because i feel like i know very strongly how i i tell my kids how you if anything do. happened to you i would literally be like that insane woman with like like if they were stolen like with shit all over the wall trying to find them like i would just lose it yeah. like people would have to really help me move on <laughs> but but people are different so that's true yeah Okay, um, okay, okay. Keep going. Keep going through your list. I was just going to say. No, no, you go. To stop you, there. you give some stuff because I've just been blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, I, let me, I'll start with the things that I didn't like. I agree that like a lot of the plot devices of this movie still don't work in the, in the remake. Like it is weird that they travel to this fucking 
thing and he buries the fucking cat and like you know at least in the remake though he does say what are we doing here judd that's true what are we doing here i liked that there was just some semblance of like okay what what actually is happening here but yeah i agree i didn't like that i also didn't like the masks i thought the masks on the kids in the very beginning were kind of like a weird it was just a very like tropey scary mask situation i didn't love that I, and i had forgotten about it until we were re-watching so when jade and i watched the original pet cemetery he hated it so much that i was like i need you to watch this remake like i need you to see the newer version of this just so that you can like see and you know compare the differences because i had a weird viewing experience with watching the remake first and again obviously like i knew what the fucking plot of this movie was but i didn't know anything about her sister i knew that this movie was going to be a situation where it's like the cat dies and they bury it and it comes back to life and then a child dies and they bury it and it comes back i knew that was going to happen i didn't know anything about the sister so actually in this movie in the in the remake i feel like they did a really good job of tying it in with what was happening with the sister or with the mom and the reason being specific to how the conversation about death and with ellie went or yeah like i i totally got how that all came together in the very beginning of the remake because she was like what are you gonna how are you gonna talk to our daughter about death because she had this whole experience with death and like I don't know I just bought that more and Mm -hmm. is it still totally like disconnected from everything else like yes does it make sense maybe not they could have cut it but I bought it a lot more in the remake than I did the original, both because of that reason and I think there's, like, a level of, like, PTSD, kind of. Like, as shit starts to ramp up in the remake, she she's, like, hearing her sister on the, you know, on the roof and stuff. Like, I could, I, I could buy into the fact that she was having, like, a hard time and she was having PTSD and that shit was all coming back up, you know? Like, I could, I could handle that and... You know, again, I haven't read really any Stephen King, but I've seen enough other Stephen King things and heard about it enough to know that there is like this tie in with the other stories. And, you know, because they're close to a place that has these sort of magical powers, maybe that's having an effect on them. And this stuff is sort of happening to her because of the proximity to the pet cemetery or the, um, you know, graveyard, whatever it is. So I kind of, I could get on board with it more in the remake than I could the original. The original, it seemed so disconnected. I agree. I do agree with you on that, is that they tied in the sister story more in the remake. Totally. I do agree with that. They introduced it in a more cohesive way. I I still felt, though, that it didn't need to be there. Yeah. Like, I didn't think... She's really... I didn't at once think the mom was psychic or I didn't even think PTSD I guess so but maybe I missed that maybe she was having more PTSD moments about her sister and it got escalated I would buy that I just don't even I don't even think the fact that the mom you could really take her out of the story entirely and it wouldn't change anything yeah. And take that that whole her worry about death. Like I didn't even even the original. I didn't feel that that was. Um, I can tell you something that I liked. I liked that the family w- was all involved in the original one. It seemed like the mom was away with the kids all the time. She kept right. going to her parents. She kept going to her parents, and the dad was alone. So I did like that right off the bat. The mom saw the cat. And I actually have here, one of um, my favorite lines was, good thing you're not a fucking vet. (laughs) That made me laugh because I thought that that was good. And I liked how they introduced, like the whole family was in this together Yeah. versus it was really just the dad, like doing a bunch of stuff in the first one. Totally. So did you not like any of the changes? So I did not like... um, I didn't like the whole family became zombies. I I prefer that the whole family died. I liked that. I liked in the end that the whole family died. Okay. Because I feel the whole family becoming zombies is a little hokey. Okay. I don't know. I did think it was kind of scary, though, the thought of what they did to the little boy Gage, because he was in the car. And I even wrote notes, though. They should have just left Gage with the grandparents before I saw the ending. 
because they barely showed Gage. And then Gage is here, but he's sleeping in the car and we're going to go off. And I was like, why didn't they just leave him at the grandparents? But now I, I then at the end, I knew why, because they were going to turn him into a zombie. Um, I preferred that they all died. They yeah. all met their doom for messing with this, this ancient uh, magic. Um, what else? I, I thought that the daughter dying was sad. Um, I thought the little boy dying was more impactful because he was such a cute, tiny little boy. Yeah. I, I really liked this, the girl dying though. A, because they fucking just get your ass. You think that he's going to, even, I, I even watched the remake before I watched the original and then I rewatched it and I was like, I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember. And I was like, oh no, does he die again? in this remake like I couldn't remember and so it was like watching it for the first time all over again and so when he he grabs him and Ellie gets hit by that truck again I was shocked I I mean I didn't I said again but I haven't said this before I liked the way that the truck hit her I thought it was more realistic there was kind of just like this weird idea in the original that these people driving these trucks were like you know what I mean like that guy didn't even I, I think he might have seen Gage at the very last minute and just, like, wasn't in time or something. But, like, I don't know. I liked the remake version of it. It also was incredibly anxiety-inducing. Like, it was so nerve-wracking. As soon as they start having that birthday party, you're like, oh, God. You oh. know what? I have to agree with that. In the first one, there was just truck after truck after truck, and they were all these, ah, like, people that were just ridiculous that shouldn't be driving trucks. You know, right? Like, yeah. just totally incompetent driving these massive trucks. And this one, you did get, you knew that trucks went by because in the beginning there was a truck. And it, and he was like, whoa. And so that was good. I liked how they gently introduced that. And the guy was very commonly looked at his cell phone for a second. He was a normal truck driver. He wasn't like yeah. eating and rocking out. And like, you know what I mean? He, he was just driving his truck. And glanced down at his phone. Yeah, that was way more realistic. I and it was a shock because obviously yeah. I thought it was going to be a little boy and it wasn't. So that was that was good. Yeah, um, but none of the kids are safe in this movie, and mm-hmm. I liked that about the original and this movie. Like, yeah, I, of course I like that. Um, what about? Okay, so you didn't like the ending at all. Um, <laughs> no, I um, yeah, I preferred the other one where they all die. I did yeah. like that more um i didn't like how they just all became i the little girl okay so i did like how they showed more of the little girl coming back because obviously i get why he buried her there like i think it's stupid because the cat came back so gross right but i get i get it i get why he, he did it and so she came back and there was this hope. I did like, oh, how about that? I liked the bathroom scene where he was, I gagged, second gag. I had a oh. little gag. A little, okay. oh. <laughs> when he's brushing her hair, it's like crunch. And this mass of hair comes out. And I'm like, oh. And she's like, and he sees the the stitches and she's like, what is it? And I did. I liked that. And I liked how, I really liked this this tender moment where, he buried her, and when he got back home, he put out her PJs. Yes. And, like, because – and I liked seeing what happened after, because in the first one, it was, like, right off the bat, that baby's killing everyone. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> you know? So that was cool. That was cool. I did like that. Yeah, it was like a – okay, and I'll get into a tidbit here in a second, but it was a lot more, like – there was a lot more – believability almost like one of the things that I had the major like a huge issue with in the in the original is the fact that he buried the cat the cat was fucked up he buried the son the son was fucked up the wife died and that motherfucker went and buried her in this I was just like have you not learned are you fucking serious we're gonna do this a third time this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen he did say though he did say that was because she the other ones had had um like not decayed f- freshly died like she literally just died maybe it'd be better <laughs> okay maybe <laughs> but like i just was like that's true after that's two true. times this one i liked that it was just the two times like it was like the cat okay but maybe like i could i get the jump from the cat to the kid right because you're grief stricken and you 
you felt like you've been robbed of your time with this child that you obviously love. And I can get that. But then for you to bury your wife, that was too much for me in the original. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. You're like, come on. Yeah. That's why I think I was happy they all died. Because I was also in the original yeah. like, okay, they're going to find your baby's grave all dug up and the body is burned in the neighbor's house. Like, you're going to jail, dude. So that was yeah. the only way is that they all die. <laughs> um, So I'll, I'll read a couple of tidbits about Ellie being the one to die that I think why, like, you know, trivia that I think uh, – backs up why I think it was a good idea. So the first one says, according to Kevin Kolsch, Ellie is the one who has the self-awareness to know what is happening to her. And she has the vocab vocabulary to ask questions about it. Mm -hmm. Like I really liked that part where she's like, she is aware of sort of what's happening. And she's like, she even asks, am I dead? Yeah. And it's such a chilling moment between them. Even in the, like, the bathtub scene is chilling. She's scary looking when she comes back and she is fucking half dead with her eye all half closed and shit. It is gross and scary. Ugh. I loved that. As, whereas you get this, like, yes, the kid dying is sad, but then you get this, like, zombie child and, like, there's nothing really scary about that. So I liked that. And then the second one is, uh, the directors told EW the twist in screenwriter Jeff Bueller's script, I guess that's the guy who wrote it, allows the story to explore some new aspects of a child returning from the dead since the older girl can say and do things a two-year-old simply cannot. So I think that's the other mm-hmm. major thing, right, is in the original you've got this, like, little doll and it's not scary, it's not believable because you're fighting, like, a toddler. Whereas, like, this older child is more of a threat. Like, yeah, is she tiny and, like, weaker than you yes but she has like mental abilities to like hide or you know what I mean like I just I thought that was a really good that's why I liked the choice of having her die rather than Gage like yes it's sad that he dies in the original because it's he's younger but for all of the events that happen after the death I think Ellie dying makes way more sense oh I totally agree with you see I didn't I didn't like all of those events like her running around killing people and the dialogue they had and stuff like that. So I thought like in the original when Gage died, it's sad and this cute little sweetling comes back. Yeah. And then I totally agree. He couldn't have, there couldn't have been all that. Like the death had to start happening quickly because there couldn't have been what she brought to the table with as far as thinking things through and having the strength to do different things. I totally agree with that. I figured that's why they had her die instead um at first i actually wrote why did they kill the daughter first as soon as she died i said why did they kill the daughter first but then when i saw the rest of the movie i scratched that out because i knew why because a little a little one couldn't have done all of that to that level yeah physically less imposing than yeah the older kid yeah yeah and the fact she buried her mom um you know Instead of him doing it again, I I totally get that too. Yeah. 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 Again, it's sort of like we get the same thing just through different means. And I just, I liked, I liked the changes personally, but. I hated the mom so much that my second favorite line, I just wrote two down, was when the little girl was killing her and she said, stop struggling, you useless cow. (laughs) I love that. If I've learned anything, it's that you fucking hate weak (laughs) women in horror movies. oh believe me i cry and there's times that oh dude seriously i posted today i was i was feeling you know i was feeling i was feeling and i was like i want to listen to black hole sun and i did and then i i i, I listened to <laughs> i die without you by pm dawn for people who know who they are and uh i had some tears in my eyes you know i just felt emotional <laughs> so i i get those moments it's the the sniveling weakness yeah like the no redeeming <laughs> the no yes. redeeming you know i don't know i don't I'll, even pr- know. I'll probably cut all this out because that was like a rude ass thing for me to say <laughs> no don't cut it out <laughs> no that's totally no 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 i i do do not like sniveling weakness and i and it's hard to you totally don't have to cut this out it's hard to explain like i understand there's 
levels of, um, and I, I'm like someone that would cry at a, at like a, a Hallmark commercial. Dude, I cry. There is probably I cry not for everything also. Yeah. I was going to say there's not a movie you could talk about that. I didn't Oh No, there's probably not a movie you could talk about that. I didn't cry. Yes. There's only one creep show <laughs> because I will tell yeah. you, I did cry in both of these pet cemeteries when the kids died. Both of them. Okay. I had tears in my eyes. So I I do definitely am an emotional being. I think it's just the, when there's no likable qualities and they're just sniveling, I don't like it. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it even, but hopefully people understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Like I didn't like anything about her. I don't like, I can't even think of anything she did in the movie that I liked. Oh, I'm sorry. I lied when she said, good thing you're not a fucking vet. Yeah. <laughs> I did like that. I liked the new mom so much better than the original. And I I felt like I could really identify with her. Like, even though she is, like, very sad about the sister that you kind of never get this, like, full story on. You're, like, not, you know, like, you're, like, I don't know. I, I found myself identifying with her. And so at the very end when she was, like, please don't bury me in that place, I was, like, no, oh, I, please don't bury her. I was, like, she doesn't want I did it. like that. I did like when she said that. Yeah, that was sad. But that was probably the only thing I liked. Like, what else was really great about her? Like, what else? What else? What did she do that was really loving to the kids or really loving to her husband besides when she tried to have sex with them? But then the... Okay, so when they were about to have sex, I was like, are you kidding me? I had my pen ready. Like, <laughs> this is a movie that does not need a love scene. This is stupid. And this is, what is that word when it's like gratuit, this gratuitous, yeah. and a, like, this is stupid. But then the cat with the bird. Okay. Oh, that was right. good. Okay. Yeah. I did like that, that. So, but as first, when they first started to like make love, but they weren't cutting away, like they were going to film this whole thing. Why? And yeah. then, uh, and uh, believe me, I'm, I'm all for a great sex scene like if you've seen disclosure with demi moore <laughs> that was a great sex scene between a boss and the <laughs> oh. support of it <laughs> boy <laughs> but as they when they started i was like are you f- kidding me right now yeah. but then the bird the dead ca- the cat with the dead bird and it was flipping that was good that was good i and and i was like okay that's cool then. okay i didn't even remember that almost sex scene because of the cat bird situation like that bird immediately oh can i say one thing i liked something about the modernity of this i did like how he once they buried the cat he used the internet no knock to the first movie because they didn't have that back then but he used the internet to go what did i just do right because i think actually as i'm talking it's the it's the believability of the moments that really make it right. And that's what you would do if you went on this journey, which was uh, the stupid. Right. You come back and you are Googling. And that's how we found out about that other person that came back weird and like some other stuff. And I thought that that was cool. A cool um, modern moment where mo- modernity really showed through and was good. Um, so I'll get into some of my trivia here. Uh, during Ellie's birthday party, Judd can be heard in the background saying, there was a big St. Bernard killed four people. This is an obvious reference to Cujo, Cujo. another movie based on a Stephen King novel, (sighs) and this also happens in the novel. Oh, shit. I didn't hear that. That is cool. I love that. I I think I only caught it because I had the subtitles on. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, no, because it was quiet. Um, which I have to say, the first movie was really quiet and it was really hard. Um, oh, I love that. I love when when uh, Stephen King does that or movies do that, when they do nods to other movies. That's great. Yeah. So here's another one along those lines. When Rachel is returning home from Boston, there is a highway sign that says Derry 20 miles. So obviously, Derry is a town yeah. that appears in other numerous Stephen King stories, most prominently in It. I love it. So that was nice. That's awesome. There are a shit ton of cat facts. I only put in one, but if you want to read a bunch about what the fuck they did with these cats and how they trained them, go read IMDb because there is a hundred (laughs) million facts on it. (laughs) And I just don't find it that interesting. I'm going to be honest with you. So I didn't put any of them in except for this one. But the quintet of feline stars all found homes after the shoot was done. Two were adopted by the movie's animal coordinator. And Millet, 
I don't know who that is, found homes for the other two with friends and kept one herself. Oh. So they were they were rescue cats that were trained to do stuff, and they all got adopted. Very cute. Oh, that is very cute. Um, let's see. Unlike Pet Cemetery, the original, Judd provides a hint at what's what this being is when he explains to Lewis what he has learned about the secret burial ground. Judd's home is full of books about Native American lore, part of a lifetime of research about the woods. As Lewis flips through one book, he sees the same warning markings that he spotted on the trees, then an illustration of the Wendigo, a towering feature or towering figure with the antlers of a deer. So we've talked about Wendigos before in a different episode, but apparently there's just something related to Wendigos, and it is written into the original novel and they didn't put it in the original movie because i think they were just afraid of it being like too seemingly off center from the movie but there is a big loud sound as they're walking out to this the burial and ground it says it's a loon mm-hmm. that is like it's intended to be that's the sound of the wendigo but the the, the remake they obviously point to it a lot more there's this and then there's also a scene where he sees it like out in the woods so i thought that was interesting yeah i didn't like it it's it did is very disconnected what what the it's a different being i didn't catch that at all that i the magic of the burial place that rises people from the dead is that the wendigo is i don't think so right so why I when when they okay so in the original I obviously I didn't get that at all but it, I do remember John Lithgow talking about the Wendigo and I was wondering why is he talking about this Yeah, I really honestly think it was put in there as like fan service, you know, like people yeah. who who read the the original um, novel who liked that part of it. I think they did that a few times in the remake where they just kept in this thing for the fans specifically. So. I think yeah. that was one of them. Yeah, okay, because I'm looking this up. Okay. A Wendigo is a mythological creature or evil spirit from the folklore folklore of the okay, the Nagantan tribes, da, da, da. Okay, so maybe maybe I don't even know. Maybe Oh, oh. Wendigo psychosis. Did we talk about this before? We had to have talked about this before. We did. It's all coming back now. Yeah. When did we talk about this? We talked about it in our psychosis. descent episode oh because a they culture like, bound syndrome with symptoms such as intense craving for human flesh and fear of becoming a cannibal oh i know it still doesn't okay yeah 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 don't I expect s- it to okay sorry <laughs> no you're fine you're fine it doesn't it still doesn't really connect although you could like yeah. maybe see because they come back as like zombies that kill other humans like maybe that's no. No, I don't no, know. No, no. Again, okay. I think it was thrown in there for fan service. You know, I think the original movie did that better by not bringing it in. You know, yeah, because it's confusing. But people fucking love that shit. People were such fans of the new It movies because they really stayed true to the to the like book. I know the first movie they kind of left out some of that like crazy Stephen King shit, and so. I don't know. I could see why they made that choice. I don't know if it was a great choice, but. Yeah, I'm bummed because I wish I would have had time to reread the book. Because I, I do agree with that. There's something, that's why I hated Dark Half so much. There's something about reading a book and loving it and then watching a movie. And it's never the same, but you hope it's at least good. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so I, I understand that wanting it to be very much like the book because you love the book so much. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's see. What else do I have here? Uh, here? Here's a callback to our last movie. Well, I mean the original. In Pet Cemetery, the original, the driver of the gasoline truck that struck Gage is listening to Sheena is a punk rocker by the Ramones. Also another Ramone tie-in, right? Yeah. Because Stephen King loves the romance in this version the driver of the truck that struck ellie is distracted by a call on his cell phone and that caller's name is sheena <gasps> oh i love that that's cool so that was another like neat little tie-in i liked that i like that i like those tie-ins 
I didn't take a note about this, but also they did use the same song, but it was a cover of Pet Cemetery at the end. Mm. And I don't, I don't know who it was, but I, I should have taken that note, but I did not. Um, my last, well, I'll, I'll tell you two. I have one that I was maybe not going to bring up, but I'll say it. So the first mm-hmm. one is multiple versions of the ending were written and a couple of them were shot. One of them was the original ending from the book. And when they showed both endings to test audiences, the new one got the best response, according to producer Lorenzo D. Bonaventura. A lot of times with endings, you just you kind of just let the audience tell you what they're feeling. We got to screen both of them to people, and it just seemed like audiences really responded to that one. So actually, they they test screened it, right? Like, and, and audiences ended up liking that ending more. So now I'll read you the alternate ending. And I need you to prepare and pay attention because I ha- I'm having such a hard time imagining. I, ha- I, I have reread this paragraph, like, a handful of times and I cannot for the life of me imagine what they meant really okay. so maybe you will be able to with me reading it to you for the first time okay so here's the alternate ending the alternate ending was of Rachel and Ellie both back from the dead and there's a shot of Lewis with Gage in his lap both of them are normal it's like a family portrait and then mom walks in She's clearly out there in another world. And daughter comes in, and daughter says, Hi, Mommy, I love you. And then the camera's on them like a family family portrait. And then it just pulls back, the little kid's crying, and Lewis just looks like he's been run over by a bus. No? Did did it paint a picture for you? No, sorry. I don't... I can't even imagine. So they look normal... But he's not normal. I don't know. Yeah. That's why I wasn't going to read it. Because no. I'm it's, i having a really hard time understanding the ending what they, they chose. Mean. The ending they chose was better than that. With the family walking up. Because I did feel like, oh shit. Yeah. They're coming for Gage. Yeah. So that they can be a zombie family. Like, that was way better than that weird thing that you yeah. just read. <laughs> this one. And I read some other trivia that was like, people didn't like it because it was like more bleak. Like, it, at least, this one's bleak, but at least there's, like, a sort of humor in a way to it. Like, you, you yeah, sort of walk away. all live this life as a zombie family? Yeah, like, you, you don't know what's going to happen next, but it's not going to be good for anybody around those people, right? No, like they're just going to go around and kill everybody until they're burned up or something. Right. So, I get, I get where they're coming on. Coming from on that, that like that's a more punchy ending. I think I even Mm -hmm. read the word read the word punchy in their description of it than that because that is just like sad or whatever. But I don't even really know what they're going for with it. But earlier you were like, I want to know what the alternate ending is. So that's all I I like it. I feel like the one where they all die, even though it's unbelievable that he'd bury his wife. um, The ending where they all die leads to. Like, I hope they don't do a sequel, another sequel. They did. They did Pet Cemetery too, but I don't know what that's all about. Um, where they all die it leads to this house where people had died and, like, you know, I, more than, now there's a zombie family walking around. I don't know right. if I want to see that, but I don't know. Actually, the, the I didn't take this down as a note, but this, uh, I think the producer of the, the remake said if this was a success for them, they would look at doing a sequel, but actually he was like, I don't think there's much room in the sequel. If we did anything, it'd be a prequel and it'd be more about this town and the actual like graveyard and the lore and stuff. And I liked that idea. I thought that would be cool to explore. I like that idea too. I'd be curious to find out about, about it as well. Judd and his wife. Oh yeah. Okay. Cause they didn't do much about Judd and his wife in the first one. Right. Not at all. Yeah, no, in the first one, it's sort of just like, it seems like she's just dead. But in the remake... Yeah, he loves her, and she's dead. In the remake, she comes back weird in that little girl in the mask, right? Yeah, so it's insinuated that he buried her up there, which I liked. I liked that they Mm -hmm. sort of consolidated those stories, because in the original, you've got this, like, totally random-ass person in in the town. And he's still in the remake, I guess, very, like, 
minutely, but I didn't like in the in the original how he seems so disconnected. Like, why do I give a shit about this a guy that I don't, you know, from who knows how long ago? But in the remake, you get the sense that like, oh, Judd's wife died and, she, and he buried her up there. And yeah, I agree with that. But he does mention how his dad had to go kill that guy, and then didn't he have to do something? So you'd bury your wife after that. But he did. I think he mentioned actually that his dad killed the in in the original. He was involved in killing yes. that other dad and his zombie son. And I believe, unless I'm wrong, in the new one, he said his daddy had to kill them. I thought it was his dad had to kill his dog. Oh, so he's the one that went and killed those people, and then he still buried his wife out there. I no, don't know. in the re- no in the remake, I think he didn't have anything to do with that person who came back. Okay, okay, that's what I thought. Okay, yeah, in the remake, it was just his wife died. Well, I mean, obviously he had a dog die that he buried up there and it didn't come back right. But then he buried his wife and she didn't come back right. And they don't they don't explain any of what happens after that. But you just come to the conclusion that she had to die. Who killed her? We don't know. Maybe him. I do have to say in the new one, I'm glad they didn't make this as random, but the house all rotten. Mm -hmm. I wrote a note in the first one I didn't mention that. The house was all rotten. And I, I forgot I about that. I underlined it. Like, why are they hallucinating this much? Like, I feel these, not the dad. The dad uh, having a connection with that ghost that wants to help him because he tried to save him. Yes. Okay, I get, I get that. I get all of that. Why is everybody hallucinating and seeing shit that's not there? Like, I, you know, like, I get it. They, they're supposed to be psychics, but I don't get it. That yeah. did not... The horror is in that these things are coming to life and they're evil. Like, right. all of this other stuff, why did they enter the house and it's like rotten? So I'm glad that they didn't overdo that portion of Agreed. it. Agreed. I had forgotten about that entirely until you just said None that. that. But that yeah, Jade like... and I were watching it and Jade was like, what the fuck is happening? He was so frustrated. He was like, yeah. Ah, what? what I have it like doing? underlined. Why? Why is the house rotten? <laughs> yeah. Makes no sense. I feel. Like, I'm sorry I didn't, like, say, hey, I'm going to shit on this movie. Because you were so amped. And I feel like I just drained the, like, joy out of your heart. You did I feel that. evil. You did that. <laughs> I feel so evil. We, it's cool. We can have our dif- different opinions about this movie. I personally really liked it. It's okay for you to not mm-hmm. like it. So what is your rating <laughs> on it? So we didn't do the last one, did we? We didn't do ratings on the last one, I don't think. Oh, you're right. We didn't. Okay, so yeah. should we just do first one and then second one? Yeah. Okay. So the first one, I rated it at a 2.5. And I think I rated it a 2.5 because of the nostalgia factor. There's something still in my heart. Okay. About it. God, I don't know how to feel after reading all that, though. And After talking about all that. And the second one, I rated a... 1.5 okay so i feel like the one and the five you know what i mean like yeah the five is like dude i will die for this movie <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> and the one is like the most despicable movie ever that i can't say even one good thing about it and i know i came in that way it was like i loathe it i loathe it i loathe it um but I, I do think that there were moments. I don't think it's the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. So a 2.5 for the first one and a 1.5 for the second one. Okay. Um, I'm going to give the original a 2. I thought about giving it a 1. But I am also in the same boat where it's like, okay, I'm reserving that for something that I like absolutely hate. And I did not like this movie, but I can appreciate the fact that it is a classic and there are good things that hold up about it. That scene with the sister really held me in. It really bumped it up to a two. I also just think the, the graphics, Pascal looks terrifying even now. You know, those parts were good. And the story was good. Judd was good in the original I, lo- I liked it, but the reason why I didn't give it higher than a two is because I really liked the remake a thousand thousand times better than I did the original. And so if anybody ever asked me, my recommendation, if they haven't seen either, my recommendation would be to watch the remake over the original. Okay. My, if they asked me, I would say the original. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. We are total, we're like opposites on this one. I, except we 
both I feel like equally hated the first one <laughs> yeah <laughs> like yeah way. so maybe I would be like you know whatever watch whatever one you want yeah <laughs> oh no this would be my recommendation watch neither read the book okay that's fair <laughs> That's totally fair. I bet the book is way better, a way better experience. But I liked how, when I watched the remake first, I liked it a lot. It was super affecting, but I did feel like I was missing stuff, right? Like I knew that there was moments that I would have been better served watching the original first, which is true. There's like a couple of moments that they almost get your ass, but then they don't, but then they get your ass like two seconds later. Like the Achilles scene was fucking great. I loved it. Again... Even having watched the remake, I forgot what was going to happen. And so right yeah. right as Judd was about to look under the bed, I, I yelled at Jade. I was like, 2020 remake. And, and then he didn't even get cut. Because <laughs> I, for, I forgot that it wasn't even in that moment. It was like two seconds later when he's walking down the stairs that he gets his fucking. I love it. Yes, the that Achilles, because I watched the first one first, and then the second one, and I was like, oh, they took that one out. That's such a good one, because it's so gross, and then they got him. Yeah, that was good. I like the I like when they do that. I like remakes when they take what was already there, and they change it enough to surprise viewers who have seen the first one, so I appreciate that a lot. So the first one, I'm going to give a two, and uh, that's why, because of all those reasons why I liked it, and... But the new one, I'm going to give a four. <gasps> you are fucking kidding me. That is one point away from a five. Yeah. Holy shit. I am blown away. I am more blown away by your score than anything in any of these movies. <laughs> <laughs> that was the surprise for you. That was My score. A blown away surprise. I thought a hundred percent, even if you like it, you wouldn't have given it more than a three. I am wow. really wow. Wow, I'm so blown away. That's incredible. That's great. I don't know that I would go back and rewatch this a bunch because it's very dark and very sad. Like would you I don't give it a four? Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. I don't know. Maybe you're talking me out of it. Maybe I should have <laughs> oh, no. four. What? No, no. <laughs> well, hold on, let's think about it. Let's think about this. Have I given anything else a three and a half? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Maybe I'll give it a three and a half. (laughs) Let me look. I don't want to like. If you really enjoyed it, that's awesome. Like, like I'm just like the. the I liked it, dude. I liked it a lot. I thought that zombie Ellie dude was like one of the best things. You give Good Night, Mommy a three. Okay. Um. I liked it more uh, than that. And you liked it more than that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. And let's see, Flicker Tree, let's see, our first one, which is Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, you gave a three. So you liked it more than Scary Stories. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else do we got? Let's look at Tucker and Dale versus Evil, you gave a four. Uh-huh. So you liked it equally to that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Antichrist, you gave a five. We know that. We know you didn't like, you should have left. And you gave that one a two and a half. Okay. That's good. Well, we know you don't like that one. And Schindler's List. I mean, sorry, Schindler's List. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> it's Jacob's Ladder. I don't even know why I said that. Jacob's Ladder is the only one that I was a loser and posted late. So I don't know what you gave that one. Oh, I thought you were um, referencing my brand new spreadsheet that I made. Oh, no, because I ha- I know you made the best spreadsheet, but I'm re- literally referencing our Instagram page. Oh, okay. You gave Stir of Echoes a three. You like this more of Stir of Echoes? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yep, I did. Yep. I'm sticking with the four, dude. I'm sticking with it. You because... liked this as much as the descent? Uh, no, but I re- I went back and changed my descent. Remember? I changed that to a five. Retroactively. Oh, I, it's four on our thing, so. I sorry. know. Sorry no, that's okay. You. It, it's okay, right. but if you look at our spreadsheet, I put a note that you says can't just I put retro- whatever you want in the spreadsheet. <laughs> Tony, we agreed. I will Tawny. find that clip for you. We agreed. You said you said I could change it. Tony made a Google sheet and it just changed all of the <laughs> all of our scores to fit this pet cemetery too narrative. No, I know a lot of people will hate me because I I feel like the general consensus is a lot of people like this um, pet cemetery. It was recommended to us to watch, and mm-hmm. so 
I feel like in the future, I'm going to rewatch it. I just to see because I literally watched Pet Cemetery the day before and had all mm-hmm. these notes. And then I was watching yet another Pet Cemetery yeah. with a twist that I don't feel was so much more well done that it impacted me. And I did say to my husband, I wonder if it's because I watched them back to back. So I know I said that already, but maybe in the future, I will watch it again, the new one, and see. And like it maybe a little bit more. That's cool. A little bit more, yeah. That's fair. I do think there is a, a fatigue that happens, right? You're just like, man, because we watched them pretty much back to back. But I wanted Jade to watch the remake right after he watched the original so that he could like really compare. Um, but yeah, I'm sticking with it. I'm sticking with my four, dude. I, I liked it. I loved that zombie Ellie. I thought that was so fucking good and creepy. Um, It was it, it was affecting. It was anxiety inducing. I liked the I, pace of it. She did not scare me at all. I don't I think it was her it. herself. It was like the idea of having to deal with a person that is not mm. the right person. You know what I mean? Like it's she wasn't scary. Right? I like, agree she, with that. She's still like a child, but like it is. I guess the right word is creepy. It's unsettling. Yeah, I do agree with that because I did like that they delved into that a little more. That they gave a chance. For it to maybe be hopeful. And it just wasn't. I do. I agree with that. Okay. All right. That was fun, though. Okay. That was a wild ride. I didn't expect. It was a wild ride because I didn't expect it either. I thought you were going to love the original and hate the remake. But you hated the original and hated the remake. Yes. What are we watching next? Because I really want to like this next movie. (laughs) I literally thought to myself, please, Me too. God, I want to just be like, this is amazing. And I'm looking it up right now. So for our flick or treat, the next one is oh, trick or treat. Okay. And I, I see that's probably going to be terrible because I'm so excited to see it. I don't know. I just see that little character everywhere. And so I'm kind of excited to see to see that one. Trick or treat's next. Trick or Treat is our next movie. And I also just want to apologize for shitting all over the original Pet Cemetery. <laughs> I know people love it. I'm sorry. It did not hold up well. I'm glad that you agreed and your husband did yeah. too. It made me feel less crazy because I was just like, no way, dude. I, This is bad. And I don't like it. Yeah. And so I feel like I need to watch that Pet Cemetery. It's free. I, the fact that you gave it a four makes me really question myself. But I am going to give it a few weeks Yeah. to let me fully get it out of my system. At least. And then I think I'll watch it. Okay. Yeah. You'll have to let me know if you go back and read. Yeah, because I'm curious. But I'm I'm in the same boat. Like I'm like I need a good one right now yeah, because please. I I do feel like we're on a streak of ones that we haven't really loved. And yeah, and my husband's kind of been. So he was all amped for it. Like he was like, "Oh yeah, that's you know that's pretty good and that's disturbing. I don't want to watch these movies with you anymore." And then he kind of saw like this string and he said today, that's why I don't like horror movies because they're either just gore, which isn't scary, or it's like a bunch of holes because he's talking Mm. about these recent movies. And I'm like, no, that's not true. (laughs) Yeah. And there is something redeeming about all of the movies that we dislike. Like I will just, in our defense, we have not given out any ones yet. Mm Mm-mm. And I think that is going to be reserved for a movie that you or I don't feel like there is anything good about. Yes. So when I saw this movie and I was like, I hate this movie. And it could have absolutely been the mood I was in. We already talked about this. I still found redeeming things. That's why I couldn't. I couldn't give it a one because there were some elements that I did appreciate. Yeah. It's going to be crazy when we watch a movie that there is no redeeming qualities yeah that'll be that'll be an interesting day yeah so All okay right. we got so everybody everybody in the club we are watching um trick-or-treat next so watch that that's what 2007 i think i just saw trick-or-treat in uh yeah 2007 is okay. there more i don't know i don't it, think so Oh, okay. then I don't that know. One. 
Um, but yeah, so definitely check out our Patreon. We have some exciting things on there. Oh, some exclusive yes. content, voting rights. Check it out. It's fun. Some fun tier names that I will not. Maybe we'll maybe we'll say it later, but I don't want to. I don't want to ruin yeah. the surprise right now. Go check it out first. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then find us everywhere. Two chicks in a horror flick, except for <laughs> Twitter, which is two chicks HF. Yes. Yes, two chicks HF. Because <laughs> they didn't allow so many characters. And you can also email us at two chicks in a horror flick at gmail.com. We don't talk about that a lot. But also yeah. leave us a review and subscribe and do all those podcasty things on the podcast place that you listen to us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the YouTube. Oh yeah. The YouTube has the YouTube. YouTube has a lot of stuff you could do. You press the bell, it lets you know when we upload something new. You click subscribe, you can comment, you can also Oh, I think that that's it. That's what you do there. <laughs> oh, no, you can like, too. Yeah. You can also like. True. So, YouTube, there's lots going on there. So, yeah, we absolutely love it. Thank you so much for supporting us and listening to us. This one was a long one, but the Creep Show one was kind of short. So <laughs> Yeah. Thank you for hanging in for this two-hour-long um, podcast of us shitting all over Pet Cemetery, both of them. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you so much. We love you for not hating us. <laughs> yeah. And we hope to God you're still listening <laughs> Be yeah at least you if they hate anybody it's me i oh, should have both so. you love the other one. Oh, the original is a f- fan favorite dude yeah but i don't know i don't know i think I... you're coming i think you're coming out of this better than i am <laughs> i really do thank you i think the opposite but <laughs> that's that makes us a good team we're an interesting dynamic here so <laughs> anyway do you want to wrap us up Ooh, me yeah you do it Oh my god, I never do it. I know you just... This is Tawny's thing. Okay. (laughs) All right. I don't even know if I can do it right, but... um, So yeah, thank you so much, and no nightmares.